Hi guys, and welcome to your uh, flipped lesson on latitude and longitude. Um, I'm Mr. Berger, and you guys are going to be taking some notes today. These are going to serve as your notes for this part of the mapping unit. Okay. Um, first, latitude and longitude are a coordinate system that are used essentially um, to help guide us in terms of placement or location on the Earth. If we're using latitude and longitude, you can find any location uh, on the planet. So first, um, there's some other names for latitude and longitude. Uh, the other name that we use for latitude, each line we refer to as a parallel. So either a line of latitude or a parallel. And for longitude, we refer to these as meridians. You might notice um, that the main meridian that we deal with, um, the prime meridian, um, it's actually found in Greenwich, England, and I'll, I do have some videos up of uh, my recent visit there. Now we measure north and south with latitude, which kind of confuses people because latitude is horizontal, right? Um, so you would kind of imagine that if you're dealing with something horizontal, it would be east and west. And while the lines do run east to west, uh, we'll notice that latitude tells us how far north or south of the equator we are. For longitude, then, of course, it's east and west. A lot of these are going to be opposites. We spoke briefly already about the reference line. The reference line for latitude, you guys know well, runs through Ecuador. So that's uh, why we call it the equator. Ecuador uh, runs through the equator. And we have longitude, prime meridian, and also the international date line. So uh, the equator is zero degrees latitude. The prime meridian is zero degrees longitude. And the international date line is going to serve as 180 degrees longitude. We'll come back to that uh, in a little bit when we take a look at a map. So the range of degrees for latitude is 0 to 90, and we always are going to have 0 to 90 degrees north or south of the equator. And then for longitude, we have 0 degrees to 180 north or south. Sorry about that disappearing. I know that happens sometimes. So this should be north or south. And then for this, it's going to be east or west. Now that's very, very important because there are two one degrees for latitude. What do I mean by that? I mean there's a one degrees north and there's a one degree south. Same thing for two degrees. Two degrees north, two degrees south, and so on and so forth. So it's very important to indicate north or south of the equator because if you just say 90 degrees, you don't know whether we're talking about the North Pole or South Pole. Kind of different places, right? What do they look like? You need to get a sketch down here. This is going to help you out. Okay, this sketch will show you um, what each of the lines looks like. Notice how um, the parallels here for latitude, they don't cross. Right? They're parallel to one another. Make sense? And then for longitude, they don't cross except they meet at the poles. Kind of an important point there. And it says that's the equatorial view, meaning from the equator, like from the side. And then if you were looking from up above or from down below, the polar view, this is how they would each look. Again, have this copied. Why? Often you see this kind of thing on a region's question. Oh, it's just good to know. So this is from the top, um, looking down uh, from the, the North Pole, really kind of Polaris' view. Polaris is located directly above the North Pole. And if you're looking straight down, this is what you'd see on either end. So feel free to pause and copy. I'm going to move along. Okay, so which image below correctly represents latitude? So pause it and try to answer on your own. And I'm going to move ahead. So image two would represent latitude because from the equatorial view, that's the side view, there we are. Um, and from the polar view, you'd be looking at it from that direction. Again, uh, try this one. Which image below correctly represents longitude? So give it a pause, give it a try, write down a number. And there you go, it's image one. Now, this is just based on the previous notes, previous page, so if you remembered that. So how would you describe latitude? Again, something else to write down. Latitude is horizontal lines that are parallel to one another. Whereas longitude are vertical lines connecting at the poles. Notice they're not parallel. If you look at these lines here for um, latitude, they are always running parallel, right? Parallel lines. Whereas um, the lines here that represent longitude 
aren't necessarily at the same angle. So like this one's not at the same angle as this one, etc. Okay, so continue to take notes here. Plotting points of latitude and longitude is like plotting points on a what? On a number line. Now, why do I use a number line? Because we need to really practice um, accurately plotting because um, you'll have to do a lot of this in latitude and longitude. So, for example, if this is 10 meters and 30 meters and we wanted to draw in the points representing 20 and 25, Okay, here would be your 20, right? Right in the middle. I'm sure you knew that. Copy this. And then finally, your 25. So in order to find 25, you don't just kind of guess. You take the middle point of 10 and 30 and then take the middle point of 20 and 30. Okay, shouldn't be too difficult for you. Using this longitude line, draw in and label the point for 25 degrees west. So if we had 30 degrees west here and 15 degrees, which you'll have something like this plenty of the time, Okay, simple, we're plotting it here. How would I have done that? I would have first found 20 there in the middle. Okay, so now I want to move on and go right to your reference table. So would you please take out your reference table and open to page 5. If you don't have your reference table yet, that's not a problem. You can come back and do this later on, anything that we uh, write in on here. Okay, but you should have a reference table for this. You can always print your own. If you Google the letters ESRT, you'll probably find it. Um, but it is the 2011 edition of the Earth Science Reference Table. It is available from nysedregents.org. That's N-Y-S-E-D-R-E-G-E-N-T-S dot org. Okay. So we're looking at a big map, and we have a lot of numbers surrounding it. We're not going to focus too much on the plates, Eurasian plate, Indian Australian plate, etc., because that's a few units away. Today we're going to focus mainly um, on what's surrounding it. So that's these numbers here. Um, for example, we have our equator. So what I'm going to ask you to do is draw in your equator using a pencil. You will need a pencil for this. It's key because you don't want to mess up. Finally, I would also suggest you use a ruler. So this way um, you have your lines nice and straight. Now, of course, I'm not going to use a ruler because that's difficult to do on a smart board. That's the best I can do for the equator. Please draw on your equator. I like to use red for the equator, of course, because the equator is pretty hot. It's pretty hot down there for the most part. Right? Latitude is the number one um, uh, thing that affects climate. Okay? So there's our equator. And then we're going to draw in our next two very important lines, in this case, lines, lines of longitude. You might have guessed it already, the prime meridian and our international date line. So I'm going to ask that you draw these lines yourself and label them. So this one was the equator. This one was the international date line. Please don't abbreviate the way I am. I ask that you write it in so you know. And finally, the prime meridian. Okay. And you'll notice that now we've kind of divided up this map. I know it looks weird. You're like, what's going on here? Um, it, maybe it would make sense if it was divided into four. Well, it is. It is divided into four. Okay, and here's how that works. So latitude is either north or south of the equator. We went over it before. It goes from zero to 90 degrees, north and south. Now, this map doesn't seem to totally include all the way to 90. It does. So if you take a look here, zero, right? For the equator and this is going to go all the way up to 90 you can't see it but it's there okay so the scale on this map changes uh, greatly as we move north or south on it okay so we have going we have this going up to 90 this area okay this whole area is north so I'd like you to add right now you can put in the, the words I'm sorry the letters north North and north, because these are all in the northern hemisphere. If you've ever been to Ecuador, you might know you can actually stand at a point where you are both in the northern and southern hemisphere at the same time because the equator runs through it. Now, of course, if those, that's north, you can fill in south on the bottom. So these are all south. These are all part of the, these quadrants are all part of the um, southern hemisphere. And now we need to determine what's east and west. Now, when they designed this, um, 
in 1884, they kind of, this is kind of arbitrary. You know, they weren't totally sure, hey, this is east and west. There was no east and west. You need to decide what's east and west. So what they did is they came up with this prime meridian that runs, um, that runs through Greenwich, England. Okay, although it doesn't seem to really over there the way that I drew it, but it does um, run through Greenwich, England. And uh, that was because, you know, the British were major sailors. So if we take a look, if we take a look, we'll find what's east and west. Okay, so this area of the map on this side is east. Now, why is this east? Okay, that does kind of say east, but you have to take my word for it. How about that? East. So that's northeast. That's part of the north and the east side. Why is that east? Because the prime meridian tells us, okay, whether it's east or west. If we're to the right of the prime meridian on this map, it's east. If we're to the left of it, we are west. So let's go ahead and fill in the west there. And then, of course, we can do it for the um, hemispheres down here as well. So this will be west, and this will be east. I hope you're all following me at this point. And you are writing this in on your reference table. Again, do it in pencil so you, know, you can actually see through this and erase it if you make a mistake. And I su strongly suggest using a ruler here. Now, moving right along, if we look at this side, on this side, it gets weird. Now, you might be asking... Is this west or is this east? Okay. If you've ever played the game um, Pac-Man, you know that when you go through the right side of the screen, what happens in Pac-Man? You come out the left side of the screen. So very much like that. I call it the portal rule. It's also similar to a video game called Portal. Um, if you go through one side, you simply pop out the other. So I want you to view this map as one thing. This area right here, if you take a look at that point, is the same thing as the area right here. Because if you move through this end, you're going to come out here. If you keep that in mind, you'll know that if you go east of the prime meridian, you're going to end up still east of the prime meridian until you reach the international date line, making this east and this east also. I know it's weird, but you have to keep in mind that there has to be zero, sorry, zero, all the way through 180, right, zero to 180 west, and there has to be a zero to 180 east. So here's zero, let's go to the right now, all the way to 180 east. So we've got west and east, uh, eastern hemispheres, okay? Again, please pause, rewind, do what you need to do. Um, if necessary. We're going to move on from here. I'm going to plot some points and we'll play around with that so you have an idea of what's going on in this department. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And let's plot some points. So let's start with, I don't know, um, 25 degrees north and 160 degrees west. So we find 25 degrees north. So here's zero. North or south? North, right? So north of the equator, 25 is going to be right around here. And then 160 degrees west, I believe we said. So we're going to go, this is zero prime meridian. West will be this way. So here's 160. And where did that point, that point, that point actually meets pretty darn close to Hawaii. In fact, we might even say it hits Hawaii a little bit. So it's like kind of right there-ish. Okay. Let's try a reverse one. Let's say we have... Um, let's say 50, actually let's, let's pick something. So how about the Tasman hotspot? I see the Tasman hotspot right here. What is the latitude and longitude of the Tasman hotspot? Go ahead and try it on your own. Pause it now. Try it on your own. And I'm going to go over it um, right here. So feel free to pause. So Tasman hotspot looks to me like, let's see, I don't know, 37 degrees south. So I, for the Tasman hotspot, put 37 degrees south, comma. All right, we always need a number, a degree sign, and a north or south, comma, um, whatever the, lat uh, the longitude is. So here's the international date line. So it's to the east of the prime meridian. If we continue, this is still east. So we're, this is still east. This looks like about 160 degrees east. So I'm going to say 160 degrees 
E. So every time you write latitude and longitude,